Hello. Hi, Alvin. It is such a pleasure to speak to you. I am too. I'm so super excited to talk to you. You're amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I just had an um, radio interview, so I rushed back because I could not miss this. So thank you again for inviting me. Thank you very much, too. And good morning in your good. country. Well, good night to your country. <laughs> yes. I hope you can hear me properly. Yeah, it's perfect. Very good. So let's officially begin with you introducing yourself and telling us more about yourself. Fantastic. So hi, everyone. My name is Ashe Abrahams. I'm Miss World Trinidad and Tobago 2022, technically 23 as well. And well, I'm a mental health advocate. I'm very passionate about mental health. That is my life. It's so much more than a cause. It's my story and it's what led me to Miss World. Um, I'm also an aspiring actress. So I studied in a school called Identity School of Acting in London for a year. Um, I'm a creative. I love to write. I love to sing. I love to play the piano. I love to paint. And I'm very adventurous. I'm a tomboy at heart. I don't think people know that. But I love things like ATB riding, bungee jumping, cliff diving, things like that. I want to swim with sharks one day. So hopefully one day. But that's a little bit about me. Thank you very much. And wow, the, your profile is amazing. It sounds <laughs> like you can do anything. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you very much. I have also read somewhere online mm. that your name means yes. something very special. Yes. Can you tell us more about that. I am so happy. Alvin, this is why you're the best because you do your research. Oh. So my name. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. My name is Ashe and it's Yoruban for sociality. So, how would I like to describe it is if you say a prayer, so if you pray for something, a lot of countries, they say Ashe, like Amen. So everything you said shall manifest. So it's a very powerful name. Wow, that's so beautiful. <laughs> I love that. Thank you. And I wanted to know what made you decide to enter the world of pageants and why there's a lot of major beauty pageants, but why Miss World Trinidad and Tobago? Right. So I got the message from my mother. And she sent me the flyer for the screenings we had here in Trinidad and Tobago. And I will never forget what she said. She said to me, this is so you. It's about being a cause and being a voice and making a difference. And it's things that I've always loved and valued, um, being an advocate for change. And of course, the face of pageantry, you have the glam as well and that fun side, the girly side. And so I had a little hesitation only because when I was 14 years old, I tried for a pageant. It was called Miss Pretty Plus. And close to the pageant, I actually dropped out because I was very insecure. I was still very shy at that age. And I remember that fear of just feeling like I didn't have a reason to be on that stage and thinking I wasn't good enough to be there. And then at 24 years old, I'm now on well, going to be on the Mr. World stage and knowing why I have to be there, not even questioning that my voice needs to be heard, especially with my mental health story. And I'm just very grateful that I overcame that. And I'm at a point now that my 14-year-old self would be very happy. Very good. And I'm so glad that you also shared about your experience when you were 14 years old at yeah. Miss Beauty Plus, because I have read that <laughs> about uh, online as well. And that's supposed to be my next question. But oh, no. thank you for sharing that. Okay. And Miss World Trinidad and Tobago is your first national pageant yes first one mm -hmm. and i don't wow. honestly i don't see myself doing another one after this because for me what this world was was the, the platform to really be a voice to make a difference and i'm not saying that the other platforms don't do that because they definitely do but for me miss world spoke to me just because of beauty with a purpose and i've found so much purpose in my advocacy as a mental health advocate so after miss world if i don't win god forbid i do plan to continue my advocacy and hopefully find my way into the united nations or in those spaces i don't see myself going for a pageant after miss world i think this will be my one and only wow very good i love the dedication and also um i understand that it was your mother who really inspired you to join miss world trinidad and tobago but yes. what made you realize that that year is your year to complete well alvin if i'm honest i had some doubts and i think it's important i say that because a lot of people could see where i'm now in the position and i found my confidence in this space and 
it was the best decision. You know, they say mothers know best. <laughs> so she really did know best. Um, but I have my doubts only because of that, that questioning of self. Am I ready to speak to the world? What do I have to tell the world? What is my story to help others? And how do I get there? And I, you know, it's always the best things in life are on the other side of fear. And that, that's what I've learned. When you learn to overcome that fear, you end up just, doing the most beautiful things. And Miss World has, I call it my butterfly phase because I felt like I've been a caterpillar for so long. And I feel like I'm finally at a point where my wings are open and ready to fly. And I'm just very grateful that I found that strength within this space. Very good. And since Miss World Trinidad and Tobago is your first national pageant and you won right away, so what does winning a national title for the first time means to you? Wow. It, it makes me think of that 14-year-old girl who really didn't think that she deserved to be on the stage. So imagine going from a place where you didn't think you deserved a spot on that stage to winning one of the most prestigious titles in the world as a Miss World representative. My younger self, and I could almost get emotional thinking about it, it is the most validating thing because I, I preach to the students that I work with and the children that I work in, with to believe in themselves and to Know that you're perfectly imperfect and the things that you think are imperfections, people will love you for and they will see your light through those cracks. And I'm just, I'm so content. I think that's the word to summarize. I'm so content and I'm just very happy. Yes. And, and people have been reading into your stories as well, into your experiences. And going into Miss World, you became one of the favorites to win. So how does that make you feel? <laughs> I, Alvin, I, I cried when you, when you posted your video because, and I messaged you very quickly after and I said to you, thank yeah. you so much for seeing the work that I'm doing and that my country is doing because, you know, sometimes in these spaces, the small islands are overlooked. We, and it's, it's okay, it's okay, but it, it feels nice to have that support to see that what I'm doing is not in vain. Not that I do it for the validation because it's all hot. It's all what I want to do. Um, but it keeps me going. You know, it keeps me in this space of I'm doing this for so much more than just myself. I'm doing it for the young girls in my country who think, oh, maybe I should try for Miss World. Oh, but we haven't won since, since 1986. So what's the point? <laughs> I want to be that person that they can look at and say, well, even if I don't win, well, Miss World TNT 2023, she was ranked top number one, what people wanted her to win. She had the support. She had the potential. And maybe that changes their trajectory to think, well, maybe I can do it too. If I win, that's even more fantastic because then they can see themselves. And I think it's important we have representation in these spaces, especially for the small, small island nations. Because we may be small islands, but we have a lot to say to the world. And I hope the world is ready to hear us because we have a lot to say. I think Wonderful. So. And it's not just me, though. I mean, you being a favorite. I mean, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Sorry. It broke up. It was freezing earlier. Anyway, <laughs> it wasn't just me, though. I felt like you are becoming a favorite as well of other pageant forums and other followers of the pageant. So does that put a pressure on you? I think there's a pressure naturally because you have the expectations. But I always say pressure makes diamonds. It really does allow you to reach your full potential. So I'm excited. It's good pressure. It's just about surpassing those expectations, but also the expectations I have for myself. Very good. Good. Now, going into Miss World, there's a lot of sub-competitions in the pageant, mm -hmm. like sports, talent, fashion model, a lot of interviews. Which of the preparations that you've done so far excites you the most? Head to head. <laughs> I love to speak. <laughs> As you can see, I love, I'm passionate about my Beauty with a Purpose project. Invisible Scars Project is like my passion. It's my, it's my baby. It's like my, I've seen it grow from 
all the questions of how we're going to do this, how are we going to tackle one of the biggest issues in the world right now, which is mental health and understanding that. Um, and of course, we've been granted some extra time to prepare. So for me, head to head is very exciting because I think with Miss World especially, it's not just about how you appear on stage or how you look and your photography, your photos and these things. It's what you have to say. And I'm just grateful for the opportunity to speak to the world and to share my story and to destigmatize mental health and to continue to make it a topic that needs to be spoken about, especially from someone who looks like me, who is in a space like this. Sometimes it can be shocking to some people, as I've seen with reactions when I tell them my story. Um, so I'm excited to have that platform, definitely. And everything else, every, all the other assets, top model, of course, the fun of getting dressed up and stressing and being confident. You know you have that queen aura. That is going to be a lot of fun, too. But I'm, I'm overall just very excited for one of the most unique experiences in the world. Yeah, thank you so much for that. And speaking of Beauty with the Purpose, I would really love to know what route, what's the main route why you started to have that Beauty with the Purpose? What really made you choose that purpose, yep. that advocacy? So for me, I, so I struggled with depression and anxiety for six years. I, it started around the age of 14. And I remember being in high school and expected to get good grades and to socialize like normal and form friendships and all these things as you get older. And really and truly, if you're not in a good space mentally, it's almost impossible to function in life. It, you know, severe depression has been compared to being quadriplegic, unable to use your limbs, unable to leave your bed. That is how it's compared on a medical scale. And this is what I learned through my mental health first aid training. Um, so for me, when I found the power to overcome, it's now allowed me to find ways to help other people overcome as well. So when I had the opportunity to create the project, of course, my natural instinct was something that was so near and dear to my heart, which was mental health. Um, as I've progressed in this space, I've realized that there's so much work to be done and especially within my region in the Caribbean, but worldwide there's so much work that needs to be done. And it's become more and more of my focal point in my life. Beauty with a Purpose has become an everyday practice for me, which I'm very grateful for. Um, but overall, the Invisible Scars project stemmed from, it started as you know, a goal to destigmatize mental health, but now it's become a beacon of hope. It's become a job to create hope through action. And that's exactly what we're doing. So I'm so proud of the project. I've become close with a lot of NGOs and organizations. And in fact, I've just got confirmation that I'll be working with UNICEF Eastern Caribbean um, within the mental health space. So it's nice to have that validation from these gigantic organizations that really do have power. So I'm very proud of my project. Yes, yeah, so we're very proud of your project too. And we're seeing what you're doing. And it's just amazing. And this is why we love Miss World because yeah. you're really living up to that beauty with a purpose yeah. tagline. Thank you. So speaking about beauty with a purpose, I would have one question. Yeah. If you did not enter the pageant world, mm -hmm. how do you think your life or how will you live up to the tagline beauty with a purpose? So what I love, okay, I told you my love is in acting, right? I love to act. That's what I studied. Um, and the thing with acting, you do have the platform that comes with it if you are successful in your field. And I always knew whatever it was, if it was acting or music, I would have a platform to speak. And I knew I would find ways to speak about mental health, whether it's TED Talks or podcasts or interviews or radio or television. I always knew that because mental health was not the cause I was rallying for, but it was my story, I knew it would always be with me no matter what field I went into. So when Beauty with a Purpose presented itself, of course, it's just a clearer way to say, hey, I have something to say, listen to me, this is what I'm passionate about. Um, but for me, I would have used any platform that I had through my creativity to also speak about it as many times as I could. So I think it's just catapult catapulted me, sorry, into that space quicker. And I'm grateful for that. And like I said, after Miss World, I plan to also continue that advocacy. So I'm very excited to see where it goes and where it takes me and what rooms I'll be in. Very good. And with your passion and hard work, I'm very sure that you will be successful in that field too. Mm -hmm. and Thank I'm you. Also, 
I'm also wondering, are you already talking or sharing some conversations with your fellow candidates? Definitely. We have a group chat. It is so funny. Yesterday they had me rolling on the floor with laughter because I'm reading all these <laughs> these messages going on, and you know, because of the news. And it was so funny because it just, I think we grew a lot closer. Um, it's just, it's so, I'm excited to meet them. Genuinely, I speak to so many of them through Instagram as well, seeing the work that they do and, of course, leaving the occasional comments in between. Um, it's such a beautiful space, and I keep reminding people it's not a competition necessarily. Yes, we have the aspects of it, but I want to leave Miss World with friends. I want to leave with these beautiful women in my phone that I can be like, hey, I'm in, I'm in Cameroon today. Can I see you? What is can I stay with you? You know, I, I want to have those relationships with them. So it's nice to see that we do have that sisterhood already brewing. And we are so excited to see each other. Of course, we have three more months to wait. But that's just going to leave more time to just get even more excited and to appreciate the time together. So they're fantastic. I love them. I'm not sure if you could give me an answer to this, but who would you say you're closest so far? Ooh. I don't think there's anyone in particular that I'm really the closest to. I think because we're all forming these relationships, I think naturally in person that's different. Maybe we'll start gravitating towards each other more. But right now I feel like it's just very equal. It's very, you know, I speak to a lot of them equally the amounts, uh, same amounts, and it's just, it's nice to interact with them. Um, I love Miss Wales. Miss Wales is so sweet. Uh, Miss Turkey is very sweet. We've had, even Miss Cameroon, we've had shared interests in terms of helping their countries and having these conversations. Miss um, Jamaica and I have parties together in Trinidad and Tobago Carnival. Uh, Miss Spain is always so polite in the comments, always so sweet, leaving hearts and things like that. And it's all of them. They're really, really just, I'm excited to meet them, genuinely. I'm really excited yeah, to finally get to know them. Yes, and it's also amazing because there's a lot of you competing 100 plus yes. candidates one of the biggest numbers in pageantry yep. so a lot of new sisters to be with exactly exactly and also i have this one question that just slipped right away and oh i remember <laughs> what do you expect in india as the host country of miss world i and what makes I, you excited about it everything everything the food the music the art the culture just the sightseeing everything and i i spoke about this when we found out that it was in india i was so excited i made a video because trinidad and tobago has so many historical ties to india we have indentured laborers who came here many many years ago and landed on our shores and brought with them the culture the food all these beautiful things and it's become embedded in our society so I'm very excited to just see the similarities and the differences and just really become immersed. I've always looked at the Taj Mahal, for example, in movies, and I'm in awe because it looks so beautiful on screen. So I can only imagine being there in person. I think I'm going to be zoned out for a little bit, just like, <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> so I'm excited to be there and just to really learn more, meet the people, of course. And I heard they have the best hospitality. So I'm excited for the, all those aspects of it. I'm looking forward for you to taste the food too, because many people said that Indian food are really good. <sighs> it's so good. It's so good. It really is. And, and we're very close to the end now. So my second to the last question is, earlier I asked you what does winning Miss World Trinidad and Tobago means to you? Mm -hmm. But right now, what does winning the Miss World title means to you? It would mean everything. And I say that because I put my heart and soul into this. I've really and truly dedicated my life to this. And I continue to because we still have a, a while to go. But getting that honor and privilege to be Miss World would mean everything to me, not just because I could continue with Beauty with a Purpose, because it will continue after, even without the crown. You know, but having that title, I can now extend the Invisible Scars Project globally. I can continue to be involved in these initiatives and charity, um, charity work, even outside of mental health, giving back, being in spaces that people need me to be. I think the toughest thing with this is when you connect with your sisters who are representing other countries and, you know, situations happen where they have the earthquakes.
earthquakes or floodings or landslides. It's almost impossible for me in Trinidad and Tobago to get there and to help. But being Miss Rule would allow me to be there and to actually help and be on the ground and make a difference. And then, of course, the um, representation aspects of it. We haven't had a Miss Ruled since 1986 with the one and only, the most beautiful Giselle Laurent. And being a Miss Ruled in those history books would inspire so many young girls to continue what she started. I told Miss Giselle Laurent once, it's never a competition between past Miss Ruled TNCs. It's always a continuation of the work that they've done, the representation that they've started in these spaces. And I really feel like it would be a dream come true. And I just hope and pray that I'm granted that opportunity. Wow. <laughs> wow. That was amazing. And yeah. you are really living up to the reasons why you are one of the favorites. Oh, thank this world. you. <laughs> thank you, Albert. I just wanted to tell you this as well as I really appreciate that you wanted to continue what you're doing even after the pageant is over because not many are doing that so that's really amazing of you definitely it's it's my life i think miss world came into my life i thought i was going to change people's lives but miss world has changed my life completely it's reminded me of the important things and the valuable things which is always giving back and making a difference so it will definitely be in my heart forever wow wow very good so what would be your last message to the people who are supporting you and will be supporting you all the way till the finals of Miss World. My last message and my continuous message is always thank you so much. I am so grateful for your support. Every comment, every like, every message, it makes my day. It, it makes everything worth it because I really and truly am just, I never thought I would have this support in a million years, from a young girl who did not think she needed to be on a stage to now being supported on this magnif magnificent scale, I am beyond, it's almost making me lose my words. <laughs> I'm so grateful because it, it really does make me go and keep going. And to anyone who's listening, whoever second guessed your purpose in this world, use me as an example that you have something to give and there are people out there who will support you and there are people out there you haven't met who are going to be the best people you ever met in your life just keep going keep following that light keep being unique to you believe in yourself and don't let anybody take that away from you so thank you all so much for your support and alvin i always appreciate your support i really really do thank you for what you do oh my gosh i felt like i have to get what you dropped because i felt like you dropped your crown that was amazing that was really really good thank you very thank you, much and i do agree with that i see you as one of the most active candidates in social media always responding to the people to the people mm. commenting so that's just amazing thank you mm. thank you alvin i appreciate that so much and thank you very much for your time. So I truly enjoyed this interview. And I know you're going to have a long day, so I wouldn't take much of your time. So thank you very much. And of course, I will be uploading this so that yes. others who were not able to catch up to our interviews will be able to watch this too. Thank you so much, Alvin. Thank you for having me. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And I'll speak to you soon, Alvin. Thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs>